Oh, there we go. All right. Can you see it now? Oh my gosh. I was doing black screen that whole time. But you know what? I don't feel like redoing that whole thing. So um, hopefully you guys could see me on the other channels. Maybe it was just on YouTube. But uh, let me read this last one. Thank you. Um, thank you, BP&E, for, putting, for letting me know it was black. Um, Child Protective Services revokes parental custody over gender transition. So this was in Minnesota. And uh, it, it, let me just read the second part of it. It says, in a controversial and heart-wrenching case, Montana's Child Protective Services has been accused of forcibly transporting a 14-year-old girl from her family in Montana to Wyoming for gender transition treatment. So they actually had her in the hospital because she was suicidal and they, uh, they, they transported her from Montana to another state, to Wyoming, um, to give gender care. I don't know if they actually went through with the gender care and, uh, and there's a lot of details to the case. If when you read this article, there's a lot of things where I'm kind of like, okay, I would kind of like to know more details about this before I make, uh, a determination on what I think about it, but uh, um, it's crazy that the the state CPS could come in or this organization could come in and tell the parents, "No, we're going to take your little girl from you because we want to do um, gender care on her." And so the parents were saying, "No, we don't want this. It goes against our religion. It's against our values. We don't want her to have uh, gender transition treatment in any way." And CPS. And the other authorities said, we're going to do it anyway. That happened, again, in Montana, in the United States. It's a picture of a reprobate mind. Again, it's, it's insanity. It's the moral fabric of our society um, being gone. You can read that article on prophecynewswatch.com um, if you want. But I want to say this. It points to the soon return of Jesus Christ, right? It points to the soon return of our Savior. So that's all that stuff I just said is terrible news, but it's good news for the believer because it points to the fact that Jesus is coming back. And I actually want to kind of transition now into Mark chapter 13 and like, how are we supposed to be living and, and what does the Bible say about the return of Christ? This is Mark 13, 32 through 37. It says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each, uh, and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. In the evening, at midnight, or at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping, and what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Or like the, 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 the main emphasis of that passage is he could come back at any time. So don't be caught off guard, right? At least three times out of that passage, you can get, hey, don't be caught off guard. Verse 32, of that day and hour, no one knows, right? So, so what? So be ready. Verse 33, you do not know when the time is. You don't know. Verse 35, watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Again, the clear emphasis is no one knows the day or the hour. So always, always, always uh, be ready. Be ready for the return of Jesus. And that should um, produce certain things in our hearts. So he's saying, he's, he's, he's not saying um ignore it. Uh, so don't ignore it, but be ready, right? A lot of the times people want to ignore it. Also don't set dates, right? Nobody knows the day or the hour. Always be ready. Setting a, a specific date or day and hour or time frame or saying there's this, it's going to happen during this time, um, removes the doctrine, doctrine of imminency or it, 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 kind of fluctuates the doctrine, doctrine of imminency, right? And we're supposed to live every single day like it's the day that jesus is going to is going to return that day but it should give us an anticipation and an expectancy and an excitement about the rapture and, and i want to say this on that um some people say and some christians and i'm thinking of some pastors they say they're excited about the rapture but listen they never talk about the rapture ever 
ever talk about it and they never talk about end time stuff and they ne if you never talk about the rapture how can you say you're excited about it and you're expecting it the bible commands us titus 2 13 look for his glorious appearing right be 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 in anticipation of it it means to anticipate it in like an excited positive i, I want this to happen way well if you're living that way to those that would claim, I'm excited about it, but they don't ever talk about it. They don't ever want to talk about end time stuff. Listen, if you're really excited about the return of Jesus Christ, then you should be talking about it, at least sometimes. I'm not saying that's all you talk about, right? You, we got to have biblical balance. But the ones I'm thinking of, and, and one guy in particular that's a well-known pastor that I won't name because he's he's awesome in a lot of other areas, just not Bible prophecy. Um, He says he's excited about it, but he doesn't talk about it or when he does talk about it it's not in an excited way or or light it's actually negative so if you're excited about the rap talk about the rapture talk about the end times especially now that we're seeing all the stage setting happening for the end times events we're, we're pretty much seeing the tribulation period of the antichrist system being set up before us right that's a, a we're seeing so many signs of that and the convergence and clarity of those signs point to the fact that Jesus is coming soon. Um, so it should, anticipating the return of Jesus should cause us to want to talk about his return and the things pointing to his return. So so talk about it, right? I know you, a lot of people um, on here do, um, but it should also, also uh, cause this. Let me throw this in there too. Here's a second thing. It should also cause urgency to be focused on our work because, let me read a again from Mark 13, he says in verse 34, right? It is, not, it is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants uh, and to each his work, right? God's given us work to do. God's given you a calling to fulfill and work to do. For sure, we've all been given the great commission, right? We've all been uh, commanded to make, to preach the gospel, to make disciples, to teach them basically the word of God and, and say, hey, observe these things, do these things. Um, but also I believe God's given each Christian, each follower of Christ, a specific call in their life and what he wants you to do, where he wants you to be, who he wants you to be ministering to, um, and, and all of that. And so it should cause us to be focused on the work that our uh, Jesus has called us to do. Why? Because he could come back at any day. So the obvious question is, um, what is he going to find us doing when he returns? Um, yeah, Doc put straight up child abuse committed by government. Yeah, it is, man. Surprising, not surprising. They're allowed. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it it's hard to um, on that comment, Doc. It's hard to read about these things and seeing them happen. But it, but it uh, yeah, it's been going on for a long time. It lines right up with um abortion right if they're willing to uh, murder babies they're willing to pretty much do all the other stuff they're doing now but it's it's hard to see it actually being played out before us with the kids it's always hard to read and hear about the stuff with the kids for sure man um i hate it and at the same time i i think it points to um the bible prophecy and the fulfillment of it and that it's it really is getting like the days of lot like it says i think that's in mark or luke the days of lot but um yeah, it's crazy. Here's the third thing I want to mention on the the what should this like produce in us as far as um, looking for the soon return of Christ or being excited about it is holiness. And let me just read this from uh, from Second Peter. Let me get to Second Peter real quick. Whoops. Because um, Peter specifically mentions this in verse. Let's see, 2 Peter 3, 11, and 12. Here's what he says. And he's, the context is the day of the Lord, right? It's the end times. It says in verse 11, Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, verse 12, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat. I'm going to stop right there. But he talks about holy conduct, right? Like our anticipation of these things should lead us to live holy lives. Again, 
what what will you be doing when Jesus comes back um, is the the question that hopefully is in all of our minds. So I want to go ahead and start to to wrap it up right there. I, I want to continue to give prophecy updates and talk about the rapture and talk about the return of Christ as a way to prepare the church um, for for his return. Um, so a lot of you guys that watch this know you go to our church. You know I'm the pastor of Sunshine Church. So part of the heart behind this is to give, give the people um, – uh, hey, here's what's going on. Here's how it lines up with Bible prophecy. So we can be living in the, the last days in the way that God wants us to, which he specifically tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, live differently as you see Jesus's approach coming, right? Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, he says, do these things as you see the day approaching. What? St uh, gather together more and stir up love and good works and encourage each other. Do that more as the last days are happening. And so I totally believe that Jesus could come back at any time, that his return is near, that we're called to keep watching. Again, in Mark 13, Jesus says, what I say to you, I say to all, watch, right? Be ready, be paying attention, and uh, be sharing the gospel, right? I think the biggest thing is keep praying to God for a heart, for him to give you a heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ and for him to open doors to be able to tell people about Jesus, to give you boldness um, to share share Jesus in these last days. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and share this. Um, and please, uh, if you have comments or questions, please put them in the comments section. God bless you guys. Let, what am I doing? Oh, hold on. I got to uh, do the most important part before, before we close out. Um, Today is the day of salvation. And so if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day to give your life to him. So maybe you're watching this and you're, 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 these things are scary or frustrating or angry in a way that um, is different than if you knew Jesus Christ, if you had that internal peace. And maybe you're, you're not sure if you're going to go to heaven when you die. Maybe you think you got to be a good person to go to heaven when you die. But let me say this. The Bible says we're all sinners, everybody. Our, the wages of our sin is death, or it separates us from God. So we can't be good enough to earn the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But it says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And then if you will confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you're watching this and you're, you're willing to say, I'm a sinner I need Jesus. I need a savior. I believe Jesus is God and he's the only way to salvation. I believe I can't earn righteousness, but that I'm just, I just want to receive God's free gift of salvation. If you want to say yes to God's gift of forgiveness through his son, Jesus, right where you are, pre please pray this prayer from your heart to God. Just, just stop what you're doing and say these words. Pray this prayer. Say, dear heavenly father, God, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe Jesus Christ is my Savior. I believe He died on the, sin, my, on the cross for my sins. Please come into my heart and life and be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. If you um, prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family of God. Uh, get a Bible, start to read it, get plugged into a Bible teaching church, and... Um, Begin to, begin to seek God as much as you can. Know who he is and how he wants you to live. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.